Every team, every topic, everywhere. This is Believe. All right, welcome everybody back inside the Believe in Eagles podcast. I'm your host, Mike Gill, as we get you ready for the Eagles and the Giants. We now know the Eagles and Giants will face off on Saturday night at 8.15 in Philadelphia. So much to explore as the Eagles look to beat the Giants for the third time this season, the seventh time in the last 15 years that the teams will meet in the playoffs after one of them swept the season series. The team that swept the season series won again in the playoffs in four of the last six. We saw it Saturday with the Niners beating the Seahawks three times this year. So let's right off the top, throw that out. Can you beat the team three times? You know, in week 18, when the two teams played, the Eagles really didn't play anybody in that. Excuse me, the Giants didn't really play anybody in that game. The Eagles kind of scaled things back. And since 1970, the merger, Teams are 15-9 and nine in the playoffs when they are looking to beat an opponent for the third time. The last time the Giants were in this situation, they lost twice to a division rival. Then they played in the playoffs. They did win. They beat the Cowboys in 2007, and that team went on to win the Super Bowl. When the team that sweeps the regular season series plays the third time at home, like the Eagles are in this spot, they're 13-6. and six. So. That's been the biggest thing that I've heard. Is, oh, now you got the Giants. Can you beat them three times in a row? Listen, Eagles fans, for the most part, this is the matchup you wanted. If the Giants were going to win the game, you can't now say because they win the game, now you're concerned. You wanted them to win the game, and they did, and now here they are. Jalen Hurts, Daniel Jones. You know, this rushing matchup's a lot closer than you think. Hertz ran for 760 yards. He missed a couple of games. Jones ran for 708 yards. This is the number three and four rushing quarterback in football. It's the most ever combined in a playoff matchup. Jones and Hertz have combined for almost 1,500 yards. No quarterback tandem has rushed for that much. It's going to be a big factor in this game. Can Hertz run and can the Eagles contain Daniel Jones? That's going to be a big factor because Jones, I thought, made good decisions against the Vikings on Sunday when the Vikings went soft zone and there wasn't anything, to uh, a play to be made. Jones made the right play and took off. Can the Eagles contain Daniel Jones here? They should be able to lock down their receivers. We know the Giants are limited on the outside. So questions in this game. Let's look at them. One, can the Eagles run the ball? and get after the quarterback. That's going to be the big thing here. The Eagles lead the NFL in rushing TDs. They have 32 of them. They also lead the league in sacks. They have 70 of them. They're the first team in the last 15 years and the sixth team since the merger to lead the league in both categories. This is a team that can run and get to the quarterback. Two things you need to do and win the playoffs. But three teams that led the league in rushing and sacking the quarterback Three of the previous five lost in the divisional round. They are the Chargers, the Raiders of 82, and the Colts of 75, the Chargers of 06. Hardly teams that you want to say, hey, we want to stack up with them. This is a different team, a different time. The Giants on Sunday, what impressed me about them, Wink Martindale blitzed about 22, 23, 24% of the time. They blitz about 45% of the time during the regular season. Wink Martindale scaled that back in the game against Minnesota. And if he does it in this game, it'll be interesting. If he scales that blitz back against the Eagles in this game, it's going to be interesting. The Giants blitz Jalen Hurts 50% of the time in the two meetings this year. And when the Giants blitz, 
predictable. Jalen Hurts carved him up. Against the Blitz this year, Jalen Hurts averaged 10 yards per attempt. Yards per attempt completion, 7.7. They took shots down the field. You saw it in the game, even in week 18. When the Giants blitzed, the Eagles went downfield. A.J. Brown, a couple 30-plus plays. Giants can't give up big plays like that, and they didn't against the Vikings. They had the highest blitz rate in the league during the regular season, 42%. And Hurts is the third most blitz quarterback in football, and he has beat the blitz. When the Giants did not blitz Jalen Hurts this season, you know, it's 50-50 exactly. Jalen Hurts did not play well against the Giants when they didn't blitz. 5.9 yards in attempt, 43 QBR against 70. So the numbers are there to not blitz Jalen Hurts. The question will be, what do they do? Do they say pressure, pressure, pressure? Or is Wink Martindale going to go against the grain and show that's off zone, rush four, and make Jalen Hurts read the defense and beat you? The question will be, I think the big question in this one will be, can Jalen Hurts, does he have the ability to run the ball with that shoulder problem? We'll find out during the course of the week, and we'll be keeping it locked here on Believe in the Eagles. You know, one thing with this Giants team, Saquon Barkley. You know, Saquon Barkley obviously is the guy who makes this offense go. But when you watch the game the other night, well, Barkley had some giddy up. I think he looked healthy. He had a total of 109 yards and two touchdowns in the playoffs. Can the Eagles bottle him up? He rushed only nine times in the game, but he had five catches. That's where the over 100 yards. He only ran the ball nine times in the game. Is that going to be enough against Philadelphia? Barkley probably should get more carries against the Eagles. This is a Giants, uh, an Eagles defense that has had some difficulty stopping the run. But when you take a look at Saquon Barkley, nine rushes for 53 yards, that's not going to get it done against Philadelphia. The first time they played, when you go back to December 11th, Barkley had nine carries for 28 yards in that game. That can't happen. I think he was banged up. He was banged up a lot late in the year. When his rushing numbers, you know, he had a couple good games at Washington. He had 87, Minnesota 84. And in this playoff game the other day, only nine carries in the game. But I thought he had some burst. I definitely think he had a little giddy up, looked pretty good. That extra week off helped him out. So Barkley, obviously a huge factor in the game. But I thought Daniel Jones won them that game. I thought he played a really good game. He was decisive. He... 24, 35, 300 yards, two touchdowns. He had 17 carries for 78 yards, and that's the concern. If he's going to carry the ball 17 times against the Eagles, he's going to get first down. That means you're getting first downs. You're extending the drives. You're moving the stick. I think Daniel Jones and his ability to run, you know, the last time the Eagles played the Giants, when Daniel Jones played back in week 11, all right, you go back to the game, when they played in week 11. And I think one of the, if you're a betting guy, one of the bets that I think a lot of people were on was Daniel Jones rushing yards against the Eagles. Well, in that game, he only had four carries for 26 yards. He had 17 the other day. He had 11. He had 10. He had 12. He had he had double-digit carries in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games this year, including that playoff game the other day. Against the Eagles, four carries for 26 yards. What were the Eagles able to do to keep him bottled up and not allow him to take off and run? Does John Gannon go back to that tape and say, look, we got to do a similar thing in this game against Daniel Jones and keep him from running? Because, look, if Daniel Jones has a game like he did on Sunday against the Vikings, they got a shot to win this game. Here's the difference. The Eagles are far more talented defensively than Minnesota is. Minnesota's problem is they play the soft zone. They rush four. They don't have the talent to do it. Ed Donatel, old school defensive coordinator, he runs that Vic Fangio, similar style of defense that the Eagles run with John Gannon. They don't have the talent to do it. I mean – Philadelphia, what makes them tough, they can rotate. Josh Sweat will be back. Brandon Graham, Pro Bowl year. Uh, obviously, Hassan Reddick is having a all-pro type of season, possibly um, defensive player of the year type of season. I don't think he's going to get it, but he's having that type of year. 
They've got guys up front. Javon Hargrave, double-digit sacks. I mean, they've got guys up front that can get to the quarterback. Minnesota really doesn't have that elite, elite pass rusher. Darius Smith is okay. Daniel Hunter's all right. They don't have the ability to rotate their guys and keep them fresh. They want to send four, but they just don't have the depth to keep those guys fresh up, up front. And then the problem is in their secondary, they just don't have a great coverage in the secondary. Patrick Peterson, you know, he's obviously not the same player he was in Arizona. Chandon Sullivan, hmm, their safeties. I think one of the problems they have, poor communication on the back end. They're not fast enough. They're not athletic enough uh, at the safety position. You have a lot of breakdowns in that Minnesota defense. You see it a lot. They got a lot of breakdowns in that Minnesota defense, and that allowed an average giant pass game to, I don't want to say flourish, but have success on Sunday. They were able to have success because Minnesota does not have the talent. You know, think of Philadelphia with John Gannon the year before. They ran a similar defense. They just didn't have the talent to run that defense. With Steve Nelson back there and Rodney McLeod a step slower. The safety spot last year for the Eagles was a problem. We saw some breakdown. This Eagle defense has way more talent than that Minnesota defense does. Minnesota statistically was one of the worst defenses in the league, and that's why you have a game where Daniel Jones is able to throw for 300 yards. Look, Barkley had 56 out of the back. I thought Slayton had that big drop, but he had bailed him out with a couple of nice plays. But Isaiah Hodgson, think about what they got from him in that game. He has, what, eight for 105 and a touch? He led the team in targets. He led the team in receptions. He led the team in receiving yards. So he's a guy who's a possession receiver that was able to extend. That's what the Giants did so well. They got the soft zone. They extended twice. They extended the plays and were able to hit the soft zone. The Giants. Can they do that against John Gannon in his zone? Because you know you're going to get four-man rush, soft zone, all that stuff. Those are some of the storylines that I'm looking at in this game. You go back to the first time they played, 48-22. That was one of the more lopsided games that I had seen all season long. It was one of the more lopsided games in terms of when you watch that game, the Philadelphia talent against the giant talent jumped off the page. You could see that Philadelphia was just flat out the better team. You could see in, in the NFL, it's hard sometimes to see a talent disparity. You look at a team like Houston that goes to overtime with Kansas City, even though talent-wise, you know, we know that Kansas City is more talented than Houston is. But it was one of the few times this year that you had a game on television and you said, man, this Philadelphia team just has more talent than the Giants do. But the Giants are a very well-coached team. They do a really good job. In scheming, I think Brian Dable is a – I mean, this Giant team's here to stay. I don't think you're going to look at this Giant team as a team now, you know, that's 4-13, and 5-12, and 12, one of those type of teams. I just don't see that coming from them over the next five, six years with this crew because Brian Dable has this team well prepared. You think about this, though. Some huge commentary on this that needs to be said. The Giants don't have if the Eagles don't have a healthy Lane Johnson, and he is out for the game or has to leave in the middle of the game. And this game is close. That's a factor. Look at what happened in that Giant game, uh, Dallas game. When the Eagles played Dallas, they were up seventeen nothing. Lane Johnson goes out. Dallas comes back in that game. Pressure, pressure, pressure. If Lane Johnson has to leave the game, do the Giants send the pressure and make Jack Driscoll protect? We don't talk about that kind of stuff a lot when we're looking at it. It's, oh, can they stop the pass? Hit? Can they stop this receiver? Can they bottle up the running back? If Jack Driscoll has to come into that game. Do you see a situation where the Giants say, we've been playing soft zone, we've been trying to confuse Kurtz a lot, but Thibodeau, let's get you, you know, Dexter Lawrence up front, a couple stunts. It's a factor. It's a factor, but keep this in mind. Jalen Hurts was recovering from that shoulder sprain in week 15. I don't think he ran on design runs much at all in that game, if at all. He did have a quarterback sneak late in that game. But you didn't see the RPO. 
the play that made Jalen Hurts an MVP candidate, and I don't think he's going to win it. The Giants, if Jalen Hurts is back to 100% or 90%, close to it, and he has the full arsenal of the RPO game and all that stuff, the Giants still have an uphill battle to try to stop him. Kirk Cousins can't move. Statuesque, make bad decisions, as we saw in the last play of the game. He'll make highlight throws from time to time. He'll make big plays from time to time because he has playmakers. If Jalen Hurts was not at 100% in that game, and he was still able to be, admittedly, a second-tier giant defense, but let's be honest, Wink Martindale's defense is not a great defense. But in the last three regular season games, give them some credit, they've only out, allowed an average of 315 yards. So the defense has gotten better as the season has gone on. But simply put, the Eagles are a better team than the Giants are. This is the matchup that Eagles fans wanted. Don't back off of that now. We stacked them up on Believe in the Eagles last week. Which teams do you want to play? It was Giants 1, Seattle 2, Tampa Bay 3, Dallas 4. The Giants were number one. When you're in the playoffs, you're playing good teams. The Giants team's a good team, not a great team. But you look at Philadelphia. How did the Giants stop Jalen Hurts? I think having Lane Johnson back is a huge factor in this game. One big spot that could be a factor because of the way the Giants play offense is slot corner. No Avante Maddox in this game, most likely. What do the Eagles do there? Do they go with Chauncey Garner-Johnson in that spot, or do they stick with Josiah Scott? How do the Giants match up with A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith? Not good. Right? Not good. I think this is a game where if they stick, if the Giants try to play the defense that they played against Minnesota the other night, they're going to have a tough day at the offense. I, I know the pressure has been a problem for the Giants against the Eagles, but they have to then choose who they're going to try to shut down. And if you try to stay like they did the other night with Jefferson, fourth quarter Jefferson, I don't think had a target. Devonta Smith, in the two games against the Giants this year, he had five catches for 64. He had seven for 67. The two solid games. And obviously, you guys out there, you know, know what A.J. Brown can do. He's a game wrecker. And this is the kind of game. You remember the game that A.J. Brown had in the playoffs against the Giants? He had four for 95 and four for 70 in the first game. But do we remember the game that A.J. Brown had in the playoffs last year uh, with Tennessee? <laughs> I mean, holy mackerel. He broke the Titans' uh, receiving record, I believe. He had, in that 2021 run with the Titans, he had nine, uh, five catches for 142 yards and a touchdown. A.J. Brown is a big game performer. His playoff career, 16 catches, 289 yards, and two touchdowns in his time with Tennessee. So this is the guy who we know in the big moments, I think you can count on A.J. Brown. And that, to me, is a big, big, big factor in this one. It's Saturday night, 8-15. The Eagles get the primetime Giants. Look. And I've said this many times on my radio show on 97.3 ESPN. You can listen to in Atlantic City, South Jersey, Philadelphia area. Eagles-Giants is the best Eagles rivalry. Eagles fans, if there's one thing, I grew up an Eagles fan my whole life. Eagles-Giants is the rivalry. we got to stop giving credence to this Eagles-Cowboys thing. We all make fun of Cowboys fans for not being true fans, and then we buy into that rivalry. Eagles-Giants is the best rivalry going. This is the rivalry. Giant fans are real. They know their zip code. They have passion. They love their team. You might think they're annoying from time to time, but this is what this rivalry is about. Eagles-Giants. Philly, New York. This Eagles-Dallas thing. Dallas hasn't been relevant in 30 years, Eagles fans. The Giants have multiple Super Bowls in the time that Dallas has been relevant. Let's get excited about the fact that the Eagles are playing the Giants with a chance to go to the NFC Championship game in Philadelphia. 
You know, Eagles Giants playoff games. You remember the Jeff Garcia game? It was at 06. There's been some good ones. And this is just another version of it. We'll be breaking it down here on Believe in the Eagles. Follow me on Twitter at Mike Gill Show. Like, share, rate, review, subscribe. This is uh, going to be a big week. We're going to try to do a couple of Believe videos between now and kickoff. So make sure you get it out there. If you're an Eagles fan, let everybody know. Uh, new show, Mike Gill's taking over the Believe in Eagles pod. Go bigger, better. We're going to have guests on. We'll talk more about this game. And I hope you guys will get involved, right? Leave some comments in the comments below. We'll try to get uh, all that stuff answered on the next pod. This is Believe in the Eagles. I'm Mike Gill right here on the Believe Network. Back uh, later on in the week, we'll do more here on the Believe in Eagles podcast. Every team, every topic, everywhere, this is Believe. Believe.